Welcome back. Now to the hunt for a sexual predator responsible for at least two assaults in Adelaide last year, both in very public places. Whether he's still in South Australia or on the run interstate, police need your help hunting him down. Our forensic scientist, Dr Xanthi Mallet, investigates. O'Connell Street, North Adelaide, a popular night spot. It's Thursday, the 6th of September last year. A woman walks along Gover Street after a night out. It's just after midnight. Suddenly, a man steps out, exposes himself and makes a sexual comment. She tries to get past, but is grabbed and thrown to the ground. The 23-year-old is then sexually assaulted on the footpath. Despite his brutality, the man helps the terrified woman to her feet and tells her to go home. He then calmly walks away. During the day, this is just a normal, quiet, suburban street. Families living their lives, people coming and going. It really could be anywhere. But there must be a reason why this predator chose here to lay in wait. Detective Superintendent Damien Powell leads the investigation. The young woman didn't scream out. In many cases, people who are sexually assaulted don't scream. At that point, you can only imagine the only thing they're thinking about second by second, minute to minute, is surviving. Two months later, the attacker is preparing to strike again just one kilometre away. You can't get more eye-catching than St Peter's Cathedral. It's one of Adelaide's majestic historic buildings and a very public place right here on the main road. There are always people around. It's Friday, the 23rd of November, about 2 a.m. A 21-year-old walks along King William Road and turns left into Pennington Terrace, past the cathedral. When she got to about this location here, she noticed that there was a man sitting close to these steps on the wall. She continued to walk past him, and she'd only gone past him a couple of steps when she felt him no! grab her. The woman is dragged into the church grounds. She fights back. When they got to roughly about where the tree is just up the path, uh, she was, managed to break free, ran back down to the footpath and ran away. Police have released this image of the man. We're certainly convinced that there is a level of planning that has gone on on his part. But what seems to be more evident as the investigation goes on is that they know the area very well. It could be that they have lived in the area, that they still live in the area. They may work in the area or have worked in the area for some time to know it. How did you link the two assaults? The two offences have been linked through DNA that has been found at both scenes, uh, in both cases, and it comes to the same man. Can you describe the value of DNA in cases like this? It doesn't matter where you go, what you do or how you change your appearance, your DNA signature will not change. You can run from the police, but you can never get away from the fact that it's your DNA. Sergeant Sue Locke has spent 25 years working with the survivors of sexual assault. The victim is not to blame for the assault. 
the perpetrator is 100% responsible. And unfortunately, there's myths and misconceptions which commonly blame the victim. What are some of those myths? There's myths that um, where the person didn't scream or fight back, then it's not a sexual assault. Um, that's totally uh, incorrect. There's also the myth that the victim must have asked to be sexually assaulted because of the way they were dressing. Um, no one asks to be sexually assaulted. Since the two attacks, the man has gone to ground. The woman described the man as Caucasian, with olive skin and a husky voice. Is there anything about sex offenders that makes them stand out from the general population that can help identify them? Uh, absolutely not. They come from all walks of life, and they could very well be the person who lives next door to you. There's nothing that would distinguish a, a sexual predator from any other member of the community. And our police investigation won't stop until we identify who this person is, where they are, and we bring them before the courts in answer to these crimes. As you just saw, this is the image of the man Adelaide detectives want to speak with over the sexual assault. However, they have now released two new images of the man to wanted. They've been altered to show him with more hair. So, if you recognise him or have any information that may help police, please call Crime Stoppers.